from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Dan Savage writes a column called Savage Love. It's seen in newspapers across America. And here is a, um, a question. Someone's asking Dan. It's an advice column. Says, I love my wife. We've been married 10 years. Young punk rock love turned into adult debt ridden love. She's been there for me, helps me achieve my goals, all that. But, well, I get the feeling this guy lives in Seattle. I know Dan Savage is in Seattle. I mean, the letter writer. But it says here she's let herself go while I've gotten myself into better shape. You know how many couples I saw like that in Seattle when we used to go up there? He says, I pride myself on being a good husband. I've been 100% faithful. I clean. I tell her I love her. I don't want to hurt her. I love her. I just don't lust for her anymore. Her skin is a mess. She has dietary issues that cause gnarly gas. She eats bad food that causes her to gain weight. I always thought I was against the society-imposed magazine model porn star look girls are supposed to have. So it's hard for me to admit that I'm not cool enough to think my wife is hot just the way she is. I've started stoning to dull the fact that I'm hating on myself for not being hot for my wife. You've just started? He's started stoning. He says she's picking up on all of this, which is affecting her mood, self-esteem, and energy levels. And since she tends to eat more when things aren't going well for us, this is creating a hugely negative feedback loop on the weight and lust fronts. You know how that works. She gets fatter, you lust for her less. She figures out you lust for her less, she gets fatter. (laughs) She gets fatter, you lust for her less. He says, when almost any girl you see is hotter to you than your wife, what the F do you do? When the desire to be with someone who actually turns you on is overwhelming, what the F do you do? When people you find attractive, women and men, hit on you all the time, what the F do you do? And he signs it, hot and royally depressed. And by the way, I think he was trying to make a uh, an acronym out of that. <laughs> I sorry, I noticed, but <laughs> this is Rain Man speaking. I wonder if Dan picked up on it. Anyway, so there you go. Married 10 years, and he's not attracted to her anymore. She's wonderful in every way, except he's not attracted to her anymore. He's told her how he feels, 
And when he tells her how she how he feels, it gets worse. Now she gets depressed and eats more and it gets fatter. Now, my advice to a guy like that would be, sounds like you got a great pal there. So leave. But tell her you'll remain friends. That would be my advice. Tell her you'll remain friends. Because I guarantee, I guarantee that once this guy leaves, she's going to the gym. You know, when I go to the gym, that's who I see. Women who should have gone to the gym when they were married, but they didn't. So now they're, quote unquote, single again. Now they're at the gym. Do you know in all the years I've, and I've on and off gone to the gym over the years, you know, I've gone through periods where I'm really going a lot, and I've gone through periods where I'm not going. But I, I must tell you that in the years I've been going, I think I've seen two married women at the gym, each with their husbands present. Like it was one of those things that it's like, come on, honey, we'll push each other. And, and, and you see them together. I've seen two couples like that. And the women who are there by themselves, almost always, they are getting in shape so guys will find them hot. Or they're there to meet guys at the gym. But I guarantee you this woman will ultimately lose the weight once this guy leaves. What do you tell a guy like this? And that's one thing I want to find out from you this hour. Also, I want to know if you are this guy. I mean, not this guy specifically, but if that story rings true for you. You are with somebody you just love to death. But you're not attracted to them anymore, and there's nothing you can do about it. You've tried, and there's nothing you can do. I mean, if you're in that position, I'd like to hear all about it. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's my boy. Tom Likas. Hey. I waited on hold all this time to hear that I'm loud in the set. The Tom Likas Show. <laughs> The Tom Likas Show, 1-800-5800-TOM. It started with a letter to Dan Savage, whose column Savage Love appears in alternative newspapers across the country. And uh, in this particular case, we have uh, somebody who uh, has been married for 10 years. Totally faithful to her, loves her, loves her, loves her. He keeps saying it over and over. But uh, she's become a disgusting mess, and he's not attracted to her now. What's he do here? I just say cut your losses. That's what I say. And I might say that um, if she loved you, she wouldn't look like a big, fat pig. <laughs> Think about that. Are you this person? Do you know this person? What should this guy do? We'll talk about all of it at 1-800-5800-TOM. Here comes Ray on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey, Ray. How are you? Great. Well, um, uh, almost as sad or as bad as I feel to admit, I've uh, been a listener for probably about a year now. My uncle turned me on to you, and... Uh, Damn near broke every rule that uh, that I've learned with you in the last year. Um, <laughs> uh, was about 18 years old. Got uh, you know met you know the one I you know love. Uh, she's you know sorry I'm a little nervous here, but um, I mean she's totally great all the way around. I mean she was gorgeous. Was uh, and when you say all the way around, you mean all the way around. <laughs> Um, I guess so after two kids, yeah. Um, that's pretty much what I'm saying. Two kids. Wait a minute. How old are you, Ray? Uh, 21. And you have two kids? Yes, sir. And you're married two and a half years. It's... May yes, I, sir. May I say, you? I can tell you're a new listener. And um, let, let me guess, because you have two kids, but you've only been married two and a half years. I'm imagining you knocked her up and then thought you were doing the right thing by marrying her. Yeah, that's what my, uh, well, I guess you'd call him my blood father told me to do, and uh, I wish I'd have listened to you much sooner. 
as far as that goes. Don't get me wrong. I love my daughters to death. Um, you know, would do anything for them. Just wish I could have until I was a little more financially prepared, as you say. And until you were married to somebody who respected you enough not to become a big fat pig. Well, exactly. You know, and I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I said, I mean, she's, you know, a wonderful woman all the way around, great hearted, and was, you know, as an awesome mother. And she, uh, you know, I hate to say it, but I mean, I should have, you know, as even some of my other friends had even said it, even my brother when I first got with her was, um, you know, to take a look at the mom and uh, see exactly what I got to look forward to here in, uh, you know, the next, you know, 10, 15 years when we, when he had found out what I was doing. Yes, if you take a look at the mom, that's the future right there. So, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, I just don't know, you know, what to do as far as, you know, or what I even can do. I mean, like I said, you know, I love her to death. It's just, you know, that umph, so to speak, because it even isn't, just isn't there anymore. By the way, how old is mom, 40? Um, She's, I think, 45 now. Oh, that old. She ran on, uh, she lives in Arkansas now. It was a big drama. She, uh... You know, did it actually ended up doing it twice to my wife's father and stepfather left with their best friend and ran off to another state. <laughs> Does that give you a clue as to what kind of child she raised? Um, I like to think that, um, you know, she's not exactly like her mother. You know, yeah, so well, I, I, I like to think Santa Claus is coming to town. <laughs> oh, you know, I mean, I don't know. She's, you know, like I said, you know, I, she seems totally different from her mom. But like I said, like you always say, you know, um, you know, women lie, cheat, steal, and are deceiving. You know, which, I mean, I've really been giving a lot of thought to the last couple of months as far as what I'm going to do about my situation. Well, uh, every uh, two days you stay costs you another day of vagina money. Yeah, no, I, you know, thinking of thinking all about that, you know, I hope I don't end up having to wait for that, you know, seven year gut check. But, um, you know, it happens. You could do a gut check tonight. Point. It sounds like. Um, I'd rather not. Um, oh man, I sound like the pussy I make fun of when I hear your shows. Um, <laughs> but I don't know, man. I it's just you want to do a gut that... check? Just catch her when she's in the shower. Uh. I don't know how well that would go over, Tom. Well, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Normally a gut know. check, you'd be checking your own gut, but in this case? <laughs> oh, man. By the way, how much weight has she gained since you uh, first knocked well, her up? When I met her, she was... Smoking hot. Well, yeah, she was about 105 pounds. I All mean, right. she's five foot... Five foot two. I mean, gorgeous. Oh, she was you know. a real spinner. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And um, now, uh, my second daughter's four and a half months right now. Um, she's my wife's probably, I'd say probably around one eighty five, one ninety. She's almost twice as big as when you met her. Yeah. And when you talk to her about this, what does she say? Well, probably about about a year ago, right before, you know, um, she had gotten pregnant with my second daughter. Um, I had, it had finally gotten to the point to where, I mean, where she was no joke, like 125. I mean, she's lost a little bit of weight, or 225, excuse me. 225? I mean, she's lost a little bit of weight. But it was to the point to where, I mean, I just sat down with her and explained everything as far as, you know, um, you know, this just isn't working out. You know, I basically what I'm trying to talk, what I'm telling you right now, I had told her. And, um, and what'd she say to that? Well, the waterworks came and, um, of course. <laughs> you don't love me for me. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, you're doing that Christmas shopping. Let me give you your Christmas list, okay? A gym membership, some shorts, some uh, sports bras, you know, 44 double H sports bras. Uh, you know, she'll need some uh, running shoes. That's your list. And some carrot sticks. 
Oh, goodness. I haven't seen those in my house in forever. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, if, if she's not getting the hint, maybe it's time to really go into the, the second gear. Yeah, well, like I said, you know, I had gone into that motion wherein I backed off like a little, as you would call me, a pussy, and uh, gave it, told her I'd give her four and a half, you know, to five months to, you know, shape up. To think else. about and, shaping up. She's going to start thinking about it. I'm thinking about doing something about it. Right? I'm thinking about it right now. <laughs> Yeah, and, Just today, um, I, mean, I was thinking well, to myself, I should and, lose weight. I was thinking about that. Yeah, you know, but, um, I mean, she ended up coming back down to, from 225, she ended up coming back down to, I think it was 145 when, when I found out she was pregnant with my second daughter. Uh-huh. And then she yeah. just gave up after that. Uh, yeah, and we're pretty much right back in the same boat as we were to begin with. May I ask, since you were not a listener at the time, why you were so anxious to have a second child so early in your life here? Well, to be perfectly honest, I mean, once again, I mean, she and just even for a, as a lesson to guys out there, she had told me that, uh, and I live, have lived and been married to this woman, uh, she had told me she was on the pill. And, um, I mean, I physically would go down to the doctor's office with her, refill her prescription and all of that stuff. And um, uh, apparently she wasn't taking it. After she told me she was pregnant, she put, uh, so she, pulled out. she lied to you? Yeah. And you're yeah. happily married over there, Ray, are you? Um, uh, all except for, I mean, that's. The yeah. lying and the getting really fat. Other than that, it's fantastic. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you know, I mean, lying I, is more serious than getting fat. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, especially after listening to you and even, you know, seeing and meeting people around me and everything else, it just kind of, um, you know, I know, you know, like you say, you know, you're only as faithful as your options are. And, you know, I mean, I've never cheated on my wife. That's one of my like favorite that. expressions that I've ever said on the program. You're only as faithful as your options are. <laughs> yeah. You know, I yeah. have, By the way, I have found that out in my own life as I've become richer and more successful. I've become more of a philanderer over the years. <laughs> oh, goodness. She's actually calling me right now on the line. Hopefully she's not listening. Ooh. Oh. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> you want to find out? I'll wait. I'll hang on. No, 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 no. Uh, okay. <laughs> I figure I'd give you a chance to go over the other line. You don't want to go to the other line. <laughs> yeah, hell no. I, yeah, no, I'll delay that one as long as I can. I've got my my uh, oldest win the car with me right now. So. I hear that. Yeah, so. So, but, uh, she, so she lied to you about being on the pill. I might add, by the way, that even if she took the pill, uh, we read the statistic on the air that women over 150 pounds. Yeah, I heard that yesterday. Yeah, the pill is less effective for them. So to face it, you're putting the same amount of uh, of hormones in in a in a body way larger than the average woman. See, and I mean, it was one of those, and I mean, it's one of those things where I mean, I, you know, after I started listening to you, you know, even though I, you know, had thought she was on the pill, you know, I was using a condom every time, no matter what, and. You know, I can name the day, the time, everything. The one day I did not, you know, use a condom, it, uh, you know, my second daughter was conceived. You have to use one every day, every yeah. time, all yeah, the time. So now, so now, I mean, uh, luckily, you know, knock on wood, um, you know, i am got my year supply as far as that goes. I mean, I just wish there were more, you know, precautions. I imagine you'll be days. saving on condoms now that she's that big. Say that again? I imagine now you'll be saving on condoms now that she's that big. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean... Um, what is it like when all those rolls of fat are coming at you? Well, what? nine times out of ten, I'm on top. I'm getting her on top, uh, it's useless. Rolling her in flour and looking for the wet spot? Uh, pretty much. And does she have... <laughs> keep, she, keep the lights off. Let me keep understand. Does she have those rolls of fat where, like... They've been they've been squeezing together so much during the day. There's like sweat in between the rolls. Well, put it this way: I had heard. Uh, and hold on, baby girl. Sorry, um, I had heard in uh, on another radio show, uh, Morning Talk. Uh, there was a guy who had gone into the 
uh, hospital or the emergency room because he had abdominal pains and wasn't sure what was going on. The doctor went in, lifted up that roll, and found there was an Oreo cookie that had sat under there and actually infected him. It had sat there for God knows how long. There you go. She's probably yeah. losing things in there right now. Yeah. <laughs> probably. Nail I mean, files, uh, like I said, tampons. Eyes and I'm good to go. Yeah. Maybe, that, maybe she was meaning to take her pill, but she lost it in the rolls of fat. <laughs> no, she had those stashed under the bed in a little suitcase. Now, did she admit to lying about that? Um, after I had uh, practically flipped out initially when she had told me she was pregnant, yeah, she had come clean on it. And um, and she tell you why she lied to you? Um, we went round about it for God hours, days, weeks, and um, I never got a straight answer. I mean, anytime I would bring it up, you know, oh, you know, I had just forgot, blah blah blah, whatever else, and I was, you know, yeah, I don't know. It just turned into a bad situation for a while, you know. I mean, but but since then, of course, you know, she, you know, shapes up, and you know, as far as attitude wise and everything else, and you know, like you said, just get her a gym pass membership for Christmas or something like that, right? Oh, if you're gonna stay. I wouldn't get her one indulgence. Everything would be uh, sending the same message. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. I just, you know, I don't know. Maybe after the holidays, I hope I grow the balls. And where are you going to shop? Hickory Farms? Cinnabon? Uh, We're on the air. You can't oh, say that. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Tom. I hate guys that do that even on your show. Typically, I apologize about that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, get her the Cinnabon gift card. Um, I, not, I ain't doing the gift card thing after hearing that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give her cash. Well, you, then again, she'll end up going in and out. Hang on a second. Oh, yeah. I'll bet. Which means you'll be going in and out less often. Hang on a second. Dave, what did you want to say to Ray here? Yeah, uh, visiting from out of town, Las Vegas, which has enough fat people. But this guy obviously deserves what he's got. And all the other guys that are as idiotic as he is deserve these fat, bloated, stink bomb women because they don't have a conscience to be responsible and understand, the, again, the consequences of the choices they make. And this guy obviously can't keep a sentence or form a, has any structure to a sentence, repeating himself. He has no, uh, uh, apparently, concept as to the long-term horizon of what he's doing. And there's so many guys out there like this that come on your station and, and complain about women and all their stuff. The women are doing what they're supposed to do. If you're that stupid, you deserve exactly what you're getting. Hey, man, come on now. It, you know, as far as repeating myself and everything, I'm on, you know, the radio I've never done before, a little nervous or whatever else, man. And the last thing I will... Not as far as Tom's rules, you know, but, I mean, I'm not retarded. You know, I have a good job. I, you know, get paid well. I went to school, you know, and um, you know, a community college and got the things that, you know, I needed to do to start, you know, going towards making a better life for myself, man. So, I mean, you don't 21, know. 21 years old with two kids, a bloated wife that you, you're not comfortable being with, and where are you going to be when you're in the next 25 years? You'll only be like 46 years old. I mean, how silly, how ignorant can you be to have made a choice like this and think that in 5, 10, 15 years, what you've really gotten yourself into, it's a, it's a very important message to all the stupid, idiotic guys out there that don't listen. Uh, Tom sends a very strong and, and a reasonable message, don't go over your head, protect yourself, and wait a while before you make these commitments so that you understand the consequences. You're a real idiot, and the next time you look in the mirror, make sure you have that on soap so that you can wash it off and put it on over and over again and say, idiot, idiot, idiot. It's a high price to pay. I hope your daughters don't turn into what your wife has turned into, and you can teach them some sense. But you, you know, are, that, you're stuck. You're gone. You're out of it. That's all Yo, I, I mean, say, Tom. The guy's absolutely out of his mind. It's a it's a terrible situation. I hope the other guys listening understand. Don't go there if you don't need to. 
I mean, I Thank definitely you. hope people learn from my lesson, but I mean, I wouldn't take, you know, anything I've done, you know, back or for granted or anything like that. You know what I mean? Well, Ray, uh, thank you very much. I hope things work out for you. I do. All right. Uh, Tom, can you take me out Kobe style? Yes, I can, Ray. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. 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 Tom, like it. Ray. Tom like it. Ray. I know it's an awful thing to say, and I hope God forgives me for saying this, but I hope you catch AIDS. Really? The Tom Likey Show. It's the Tom Likey Show at 1 800 5800 Tom coming to you from Hollywood, California. Our nation's capital. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being part of our program. And never mind Washington, D.C. Nobody really gives a rat's ass what's going on there. This is where it's at. This is where we are at 1-800-5800-TOM. And we are talking about uh, the guy who... Uh, He's been married 10 years, loves his wife, loves her, loves her, loves her, loves her. One problem is she's become a big, fat, skanky thing. And he can't bear to have sex with her anymore, and he doesn't know what to do. And he writes to an advice column. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Look at these calls. Tom, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, how you doing? Great. Hey, I did the same story, and I'm a fan of yours. Six years, you saved my life, buddy. I took up with the uh, high school sweetheart after two years. I, I graduated. She was still in 10th grade. She was 110 pounds, about 5'6". And one time when she was laying in her backyard when she was a sophomore in her bikini, two cars wrecked at the corner lot she lived in. We used to brag about that. Uh, between our third and fourth anniversary, she checked out of the hospital at 230 pounds. Oh, my God. Forgot she to take her birth control pills. What uh, a coincidence. Over, she conveniently forgot. Yeah. Over eight like crazy. She thought a Boston cream pie was a snack for a movie. And she'd tell me, oh, I'm still the woman you married. And I'd say, no, you're two of the women I married. And she thought that was okay. And I remember one night when it was really a turning point, she used to sleep next to me with her head on my shoulder and her leg across my middle. One morning I woke up with a headache and dizzy and numb from the waist down from the weight of her thigh on my abdomen. Unbelievable. Was, Are you kidding that me? Much. That was too much. And she got meaner and grouchier. And, you know, being overweight affects your moods. It affects your hormone levels. It's not just an appearance issue. It's an all-around health issue. It affects the way you feel. Amazing. And well, now, apparently, uh, apparently she feels pretty good about herself. Well, I, I left her. After, she wasted seven years of my life. And I paid child support. The kids are gone. I got one now that likes your show a lot. And we just had our eighth anniversary. She's 18 years younger than me. She looks up to me, admires me, brags about me in, in front of her friends. And she actually lost 20 pounds. She weighed 130 when we got together. She weighs about 108 now. And uh, three years ago, she started dancing at a posh club here in Dallas. And she got fourth place in the contest last April. And she cares a lot about her appearance. She goes to the gym. She rollerblades. She lifts weight. We got a pull-up bar in our bathroom hallway. Are you serious? I am serious. And she I, she brags about her, her figure and how she's going to look when she's older. And I'm not going to uh, suffer uh, a woman just use, and Oh, she's got a 10-year IUD, and it was her idea. Love it. And you know what? She listens to your show the last few years. She gets riled up and clenches her little fist. She's 5'2 and a ball of fire. And, uh, boy, I tell you, every now and then, uh, every year or so, she'll get an opportunity to talk to one of her feminist friends and get riled up. And I just love to watch that show. I it's, love it. It's great. And uh, a lot of it we owe to you, really. Definitely owe a lot of it to you. And I want to thank you for that. Thank you. You have a good one. I appreciate the call. Wow. There's another satisfied customer. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here comes Jim on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Um, yeah, I've been listening to your show for about a month, 
And um, I've heard you comment, and I've heard your listeners comment about uh, a toaster, comparing a woman to a toaster. Can you tell me what? Can you tell me? I've ne- I've never heard that. Explained. I don't remember. I've compared women to cars. You know, they lose 20% once you drive them off the lot. And it's cheaper to lease them than to buy them. You can get a hotter chick if you just rent rather than owning. Okay. I don't remember comparing chicks to toasters. I've, I've, heard, I've heard the comment made several times, and I, I'm just curious. Are you sure about... you heard it right? Yeah. Well, if anybody has heard me compare a woman to a toaster, please call me and tell me, because I don't ever remember saying it. Hmm. I mean, it sounds like it could be a very uh, inventive, if only I knew, like, what the reason was I compared a woman to a toaster. Okay. But I don't remember. Maybe it was another show. No, it was your show. Really? You sure Russ Martin didn't compare a woman to a toaster? No, she. Well, actu- actually, it was your listeners would, you know, your people call in and, you know, make the comment about an analogy that you had made in the past. And I was just curious about the explanation. Uh, well, if somebody remembers me comparing a woman to a toaster, I'd, I'd certainly love to hear it again. Okay. Thank you. But I don't remember it. <laughs> Women are like toasters. <laughs> Fill in the blank. <laughs> Almost sounds like a show topic. <laughs> I've told you all the ways women are like cars. That's true. That's uh, quite a good analogy. Women, men see women the way they see cars. Steven on the top like his show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. How are you doing? Great. So uh, I married a uh, an American woman. At about uh, 23 years old, um, 35 now. I was married to her almost 10 years. Two kids, and she ballooned up considerably. Um, so what I did is I went out and married a Brazilian woman. <laughs> How's that working out for you? Incredible. I, I thought long and hard about getting married again after the experience with the with an American woman, um, but I learned uh, pretty quickly that. Uh, Brazilian women are, are, are not the same as American women. They care about who they are. They care about their men. And uh, they're, they're just incredible. And they've got nice butts. They have nice everything. Yeah. And, and they take care of, of who, they're, who they're with. And their bodies. And their bodies. So I, and I talk to young kids nowadays... Uh, just coming out of college, and I try to make sure that they understand, do not get married uh, until you're at least 30, and do not get married without a prenup, and do whatever you can to hold off having children. Um, in Brazil, for instance, they uh, it's required by law to sign a prenup before anybody gets married. Love that. Uh, definitely something we could use, but because politicians are mostly attorneys, that'll never happen. It'll just never happen, especially with women's lib from 1970s on. It just, the entire U.S. society has cha- has changed tremendously. Yeah. I mean, feminism has ruined it for American women, and I tell guys, just forget about American women. Forget about them. Well, they don't know who they are. They don't know what. Stop complaining are. about illegal immigration and start benefiting from it. They don't know whether they're women or men. That's... You know, I think a problem with Lou Dobbs, the guy's never gotten into bed with somebody from Latin America. Come on, step it up, Lou. <laughs> if Lou Dobbs had gotten it on with uh, any chick from any uh, Latin American country, he wouldn't be saying that stuff he says today. Uh, he would be really appreciative. Yes. He'd be smiling a lot more. I'm in favor of amnesty, let me tell you. <laughs> well, I, 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 I'm show. in favor of opening the borders, but only to women. I could handle that. <laughs> <laughs> we have them on the guest worker program. <laughs> well, love your show. I'll keep on listening to it, and I'll keep on trying to pass along the word. 
All right, Stephen, thank you. Now, Paul claims he knows when I mentioned the toaster. Hey, Tom, what's happening, brother? Not much, Paul. Okay, here's what it was. I remember the show. And what had happened was you were explaining how we all put these chicks back in the recycle bin, okay? And one time you had a real nice toaster, and I guess you had a contractor. Somebody was doing some work on your pad, and they had told you you left the toaster on, or there was a short, something to that effect. That's true, the toaster oven, yes. Okay, now this is the point that you were trying to make. When you went ahead and put the toaster oven in the recycle bin, later on when you came home, it was gone. And you had said somebody had thought they found a great, I think it was a DeLonghi, wasn't it? Yes, you're right. Okay, all right. See, do I listen or what? You do. do. Listen? Okay. You listen better than I do. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying, <laughs> uh, I'm enjoying uh, reminiscing about that call. Okay, Go ahead. Because I learned from you, bro. I learned from you, man. Yes. Anyway, check this out. What had happened was someone had taken it out of the recycle bin. And they thought, and this is what you had explained, they thought they got a great toaster oven. What they didn't realize was when they got it home and plugged it in, it was had a short or something was going to happen. No, I can tell you what. I, yeah, I can tell you what happened. The, 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 the thing, uh, you know how with a toaster oven, it's got two settings, one to make toast and then one to, to have it on continuously like an oven. Right. So I tried to make toast, and when I took the toast out, it just stayed on. Right. And so whoever took that toaster oven, they think they, because those DeLonghi appliances look so great. They're from Italy. They're very well designed. Beautiful. Somebody thinks they got a great toaster oven. But in reality, right. it'll probably burn their house down. And that's the analogy that you made with some of these chicks. When you take them out of the recycle bin, they're in the recycle bin for a reason. That's right. And when you take them out of there, you never know what you're going to get. Uh, there's somebody put it out there for a reason. That's right. That's right, absolutely. I remember that story. So when that guy was calling up and he was talking about the toaster oven, that's really what had happened. I think that's what he was talking about. I, I don't remember lots of calls about that, but that that conversation definitely took place. And that DeLonghi toaster oven, that absolutely happened in my house. Absolutely. After, I remember that, man. Yeah, after years of service, uh, the kitchen felt warm when my contractor, Chuck, walked into the kitchen. And uh, he looked around and he saw that he, he told me I left the toaster on. Right. So one day I made toast in there. And then when I took the toast out, I realized it wasn't turning off. I got to tell you, as much as I love that story, I, I really think when I hear what, the way you talk about upgrading the car, that's really what it's all about. Yes. Really, no, nobody, as I always say, nobody grew up dreaming of driving a Toyota Corolla. <laughs> that's right. But most people are married to a Toyota Corolla. Or that's what it ends up being. You know, well, she'll go 200,000 miles. She's reliable. She's right. dependable. Not very sexy, and you can't show her off, and no chick would ever want to uh, get into it. Right, absolutely. But it's as reliable as the day is long. But when you were a kid, you didn't buy road and track and look at, uh, you know, Honda Civics. Exactly. You, you, um, you, you, even though you may be driving one today, that's not what your dream was. Brother, you are the man. Do me a favor and flush me down the toilet, bro. Of course I can. Here you go, Paul. God, I love that. Yeah, those those analogies. Um, I, it's the only way of getting a point across sometimes. The recycle bin analogies. By the way, my housekeeper, Raina... The other day I saw uh, outside my house, this is true, speaking of the recycle bin, outside my house the other day I saw an upright vacuum cleaner standing outside my house. So I went to my housekeeper, Raina, and I said uh, to Raina, I said, uh, hey, was that your vacuum cleaner? Did it finally give out? And she said, oh, no, 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 no. I see it out there. It looked perfectly good. So I took it. I uh, have to give Raina the toaster story. <laughs> I have to do it, even in my own house. Absolutely. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Or hear our show streaming live by going to our website. It's BlowMeUpTom.com. Click on the Listen Live button. And you'll be listening live. The Tom Likey Show.